In this week's Fusion Friday, we're covering hotkeys in Fusion and how you can program your own. Take a look at what you can do and how much time this will save you. If I'm setting up a simple project, I could just press B to add in a background node, connect that into my media out. Then I could press Shift T and that adds in a text node with a merge node. And after coming in here and changing some of the colors and settings, I could do Shift G and add in a already animated transform node using a custom setting file. So just in a few clicks, I'm able to build a really nice graphic. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up all of that plus some more in the Fusion Hockey Manager. To preface this video, the Fusion Hockey Manager is really outdated, annoying to use, and kind of limited, which is why nobody uses it. That being said, even in its current limited form, it is still a really powerful tool that can save you a bunch of time. I think everybody should have at least a couple of keyboard shortcuts set up. And at the end of this video, I'll talk about how you can help make this a better system in the future. Let's start creating some shortcuts, and there's two ways to do this. The first one is using the Fusion Hockey Manager, and that's where we're going to start. Then, taking what we learned from that, I'll show you the best way to create custom keybinds in the program and give you a download of my keyboard shortcuts so you have a starting point to work from. And this series is made possible by my website with templates, so check that out down below if you want some awesome time-saving tools for DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so in the Fusion page, I've reset all my keybinds, so we're going to start from scratch. And the way to access the hotkey manager is by doing Control, Shift, and Spacebar on your keyboard. Instead of opening the Select Tool menu like Shift Space, this opens the Select Action window. And this has all of the nodes, but it also has some Fusion actions. And one of those actions is Hotkeys. So if I type that, I want this Customize Hotkeys option. When I press Add, it's going to open up the Hockey Manager. The first thing that we notice and need to look at is this box on the left, and this is the Select Target Area. The target is essentially the area that Fusion is going to be looking for that keyboard shortcut. So the main ones that we're going to use is Frame, which is going to be the entirety of the Fusion window, and then the other one under Views is Flow, and that is going to be the No Graph. So in the node graph, we'll do stuff like adding in nodes, adding in setting files, and that kind of stuff. Then under frame, we're going to do stuff that we want to work anywhere. Even if we're in the inspector, in the viewer, in the effects library, it'll always be looking for this keyboard shortcut. To make a new one, we'll press this new button down here and then enter in the key sequence. For this one, I'm going to do control and H on my keyboard. And then for the actions, we want to come down to UI and then we're going to do customize hotkeys. When I press OK, I can do Control H, and this will now open up the Hotkey Manager so it's much easier to get to. Let's look at this stuff a bit more in depth. So if we come down to Frame, you can see all of these existing keyboard shortcuts to view on the different viewers, to load in different settings, and down here we have Control H for Customize Hotkeys. When I click on one of these, I have a few options. I can either delete it if it was one that I created, or I can edit it to change its keybind or the action it does. This also means that we can go through all the existing ones, click on it, press edit, and you can see where its action is, you know, which one it's using, and customize the hotkey that it uses. So looking down here, I have shift space for choose tool, and if I wanted, I could press edit and change what the hotkey for that is. But anyways, for stuff like adding in nodes, we only want that to work down in the node graph. So I can come to the view section and come down to flow, and you can right away see some of the other controls we have, basically all of the bookmark stuff that only works down in the node graph. But for this one, I'm going to press new, I'm going to enter in the key sequence, and I'm going to do a transform node. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard, and you'll notice that it says control key, not T. For some reason, there's a bug that when you're doing individual letters, you just have to press a letter a couple of times for it to actually show up. So just press T a few times, it'll show up, and then you're good to go. I skipped over this the first time, but we have these two drop down menus. The first one is actions and the second one is tools. Tools is going to be all of the nodes. And when I drop this down, you can see it's all the same categories that you would find up in the effects library. Actions is all that other stuff that would appear in the control shift space menu. It's stuff like adding in a script, adding in a setting file, you know, opening the UI manager, all of that kind of stuff. In this case, though, we're going to come down to tools, scroll down until we find transform. And then under this transform category, we can find the transform node. When I press OK, it'll add that to the bottom of the list. Then I can press OK again. And now using T, it'll add in a transform node for me. It'll add the node in where I last clicked. So if I click over here and then move my mouse, it's still going to add it in in that original position. Now, if I have a node selected and press T, it'll add it right after the node. So it works exactly the same way as Shift Space does. Let's add in one more. So Control H to open the Hotkey Manager, come down to Views, Flow, and then we'll do New. For this one, I'm going to do the text node. So I'm going to do a capital T. So do Shift T in the Enter Key sequence, come down to Tools, Generator, and then find the Text Plus node. When I hit OK, the T still adds in the Transform node, and then Shift T will add in the Text node. When adding in keyboard shortcuts, I always recommend testing out the shortcut in a couple of ways before you actually create it. So for example, Control P doesn't do anything on my node graph, but if I do have a node selected, it will 
will enable and disable pass through on that node. So you don't want to bind anything to control P since that one is already being used. But if there's a keyboard shortcut like in the spline editor like F to flatten out the keyframes, that one only works in the confines of the spline editor. So there's no problem if you also bind that on the, the flow view to add in a new node. All right, so in this process, we have created a problem and it wasn't really us specifically, but more a bug inside of Fusion. Right now, everything appears to work exactly how we've set it up. I can do Control H to open the hotkeys, press T for a transform and Shift D for a text node. But what happens when I restart the program? After restarting, I can still press Control H to open the hotkey manager, but I can't press T or Shift T to add in those nodes. And for you, it might be switched around. It's a little weird how it works. To figure out what the problem is and find the solution, let's take a look at how Fusion is working in the background to store these keybinds. To some, this might seem a little confusing, but we're going to take it one step at a time and break it all down so it is really easy to understand, even if it doesn't seem like the most convenient solution. In the effects library, come down to templates and then press the three dots and do show folder. This will bring us to the location that all of our templates are stored, and you can see all of the DRFX files I have installed, like the editor collection and editor titles. Check those out, link down below. What we want to do here is go up one directory, up to this Fusion directory, and this is where all the info relevant to Fusion is stored. So for example, you can put macros in this folder, settings in this folder, and scripts, and, and that kind of stuff. What we want to do is go into this profile section, then come to default, and open the user.fu file. You can open this file on any text editor on your computer, uh, whether that's Notepad or VS Code like I'm using. In this file, you can see it's storing hotkeys in a very simple form. It sets the target as Fusion's frame and Control H as the app customize hotkeys to open up that window. The issue is what happened to our T keyboard shortcut for the transform node and Shift T for the text node. Well, let's go back into DaVinci Resolve, add those back in and see what happens. So Control H, we'll come to Views, then come down to Flow, do New, and we'll press T a few times. Come down to Tools, uh, find Transform, Transform, and press OK. When I switch back to the code editor, you can see it changed our target to Flow View and replaced our keybind with the one for the Transform node. There's some bug in Fusion that only prevents this file from storing one target at a time. So if I come in here and add in the Text Plus node with Shift T and then press OK, it's still going to be able to store that in the file just fine. But if I add in something for the frame view, it's going to replace all, everything else that I've done. Thankfully, the solution to this is pretty easy. So what we want to do is go back to that folder that we found the user.fu file in. Then we're going to make a new text document and just name this keyboard shortcuts. The name of this can be whatever you want, but the extension needs to be .fu. Every time Fusion opens, it'll load in all the .fu files found in this folder. So if we open this up, go back to the user.fu and copy all of this text, putting it into this file and saving it is gonna lock that into Fusion and not make it so it can't be overwritten. So we had the keyboard shortcut for T and Shift T. Let's come back into DaVinci Resolve and re-add that one for Control H. Remember, this one is found under the Actions, under UI, and Customize Hotkeys. Okay, and once we get that Control H keyboard shortcut to show up again, all we need to do is copy this inner hotkeys section. Then we can come back to the keyboard shortcuts and go to the last line here and paste it in. So for each new target that you use, you need to have a new hotkey section. Now, even when I restart DaVinci Resolve, both of these are going to work just fine. So this is a really good way of figuring out what the different hotkeys do. You can go into the hotkey manager, you can save one, make a change to it, and check what the user.fu file is, and if you like it, then you can save it in your hard-coded copy. But instead of figuring out all of this manually and doing it yourself, I have my keyboard shortcuts linked down below, so that way you have a really good starting point, and we're going to walk through that now. Okay, and this is my hotkey sheet, and you can see it's separated into two different sections. The first one here is the flow view hotkeys, or the ones that only apply to the node graph. Then down below, we have all of the frame view ones, so the ones that work anywhere inside of Fusion. Anytime you make a change to this file, you do have to save it and restart DaVinci Resolve for it to actually take effect. So if you're just testing stuff out really quick, just use the normal hotkeys manager and then paste that and put it into the actual hard-coded copy of the keyboard shortcuts. But anyways, at the top, I have all of my lowercase keybinds, and these are just the ones I have to press a single key to add in. So in DaVinci Resolve, I can do B for background, T for transform, M for merge. I can do C for color corrector, N for fast noise you know it's really easy to add all these in then I have my uppercase keybind so this is when I need to use a letter twice so for example the text node I already have T set to transform so I do shift T to add in the text node and then I also have stuff found to the alt key and this is important to know even if you're on Mac you want to make sure it says alt not command so for this I can add in the paint node I can add in the resize node and stuff like that really quick in the code you can see it says add tool ID equals paint 
but it's not always just the name of the node. For example, better resize adds in the resize node. So how do you actually figure out what the ID of a node is? What you want to do is add in the node and then copy it. All nodes are stored in just plain text format. Back in our text editor, let's make a new document and paste this in. The first thing is the node label that you set in Fusion. And then right after this, we have the actual name of the node. So whatever is in this section is what you need to put in the ID section of the keyboard shortcut. And this is another really cool thing you can do with hotkeys. You can run any script that's installed in your system. So I have Shift S set up to run the Wipri macro script, and this exact code will work on your system if you have the tool installed. This allows me, if I'm working with some pre-built title and customize it to something else, I can go to the Fusion page, I can copy the node, and then just press Shift S and it runs the script so I can save this as my own. That way in the future, right from the effects tab, I can drag down this title with all of my changes already made. One thing to notice here is the file path. You can see it's not doing C, then users, then you know, going through app data, all that stuff. It just says scripts, utility, Wipri macro. Same thing with this add setting, it goes macros and then custom glow. How does this work? Well, back in that folder with the user.foo, if we go up two folders to Fusion, what you can see is when you do scripts and colon, it's going to reference this scripts folder. Then in here it goes to utility, and you can see it has the Wipri macro.lua. Same thing with macros, it's going to reference the macros folder and then look for that file in there. Alright, then down here we have a function which does get a bit more advanced, but this one is going to enable or disable a node by pressing D on your keyboard instead of doing control P. So you can tie that to any key that you want, but this makes it a lot easier to enable or disable pass through. Let's take a look at these global keyboard shortcuts or the frame keyboard shortcuts. A good amount of these ones like the first two are set to their default keyboard shortcuts. I just wanted to add these in so that way you can easily change them if you want to. The first one is shift space will open the choose tool menu and shift control space opens the choose action menu. Then right here I have control H set to open up the customized hockey so you can still play around with that no problem. And now all of these next ones except for shift C are set to their default ones but you can change it so maybe doing you know alt S will disable or enable the spline editor. Then down here we have some custom keybinds which do get a bit more advanced and huge thanks to Asher Roland for helping me figure this stuff out. What we did here is took the keyboard shortcuts for setting the in and out positions on the edit page and brought them into the fusion page. So in my comp if I only want to preview a part of this I can press I on my keyboard and it sets the in point and then I can move over here and set the out point with O. So now it's only going to loop this one section over and over again. Then to set this back to be the full length of the composition, I can do Alt to X and it resets those. Pretty cool stuff. Now yes, I know this is a bit complicated and this could be a way better system built inside a DaVinci Resolve, but at least at this point you can start adding in some keyboard shortcuts and save a ton of time in the process. But like I said at the beginning, there's a way that you can help make the system better. So how do you do that? Well, I've created a post on the feature request page on the Blackmagic forum asking for a redesigned hotkey manager in Fusion. What I need you to do is go reply to that post and say, yes, we need a new Fusion hotkey manager and commenting some of the shortcuts you want to see implemented into the program. There's a lot of actions inside of Fusion that I really want to use, but you just can't tie to a keyboard shortcut. For example, you can't tie the macro editor to a keyboard shortcut. You can't tie edit controls to a keyboard shortcut. Even in the no graph, you can right click, come to scale, and then do scale to fit. You can't tie that to a keyboard shortcut. Why? So go to that post link down below, say we really want to see this redesigned, and comment some of the stuff that you want to see. But make sure you're respectful about this. We don't want to overwhelm Black Magic. We just want to show them that this is something that we want to see. And frankly, being rude is not going to do anything to help it. I know this one got into the weeds of Fusion a little bit, but I hope it's going to really help your workflow. And if you have any questions about it, just let me know. Again, this series is made possible by my website, Whip Templates. So check that out, link down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for another Fusion Friday.